Alright, hello and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4, the final season of the final playlist series. We need to drive a buggy, thankfully we have our buggy that we picked up when we started doing the cross country. And now we need to get 10 air skills with it, so the best way I find to do that, it, it's not the quickest, but it is the most fun, and that's just to go bombing across the countryside. <laughs> I also want to go to the Horizon Festival, so rather than just teleporting there, uh, it's more fun to drive there, if you can call this driving. And we're probably racking up a bunch of our other daily challenges along the way, which I think we needed like three speed skills. I'm fairly sure I've gotten those by now. There was probably something about wreckage. Gotta go fast completer. There you go, that's probably that one. I have no idea whether or not I've got the air skills yet or not. I didn't pay attention to what that one was called. The ground across here is a little bit too flat. There we go, unlimited power complete. That seems more likely. Alright, so the next thing it wants us to do is to win a cross-country race over by the castle, over by the beach. I don't want to do that just yet. I'll finish what I'm in the process of doing first. We also need to get a single star of a speed trap. I'm really sure it was a trap as opposed to a zone. We joined the zone late, but there is the speed trap on the bridge up ahead, so we'll go zooming across that. I'm fairly sure we should be able to get at least one star on this. go 217 seems fast enough for a single star stars and garters completed what an odd name there's another abandoned car rumor but i'm up to my neck putting together the spring seasonals you couldn't go over we look for me could you now i wish this had popped before because i was right there that that's my house i was right there never mind we'll <laughs> go back and look for that later So we're back at the festival, and this week has somewhat of an interesting photo challenge requirement, and that is to take a picture of the main stage with two other players or driver tars. Thankfully, they do have that option. So what you can do is come into here, Horizon Life, Horizon Solo, drop out of the online one, and we should start seeing some more driver tars pop up. There we go, a bunch of them just appeared. And there's a good chance that some of them will come driving through behind me. Oh, like they're doing right now. And now we hit photo mode. And line it up. Take the shot. Photo challenge, headline trio. Tick, tick, and tick. Done. No having to worry about real people. <laughs> so rather than going straight to the castle and doing that cross-country circuit straight away, First, we're going to do one of the seasonal championships, which is an off-road series. And it rewards a buggy, which you think, oh great, I can use that for the weekly challenge. No, you need a buggy in order to race in the championship in the first place. So you're a bit stuck. Um, <laughs> but hopefully you have the basic bug, which I actually had to down tune because I'd replaced the engine and made it an A-class so I swapped it back to the original D-class engine and then just gave it all of the upgrades pretty much except for camshaft and that popped it to the top of B-grade which is perfect because I prefer this to the other option that I had I can't remember the name of it but I find a lot of the other buggies are a bit lackluster and this is a very annoying track, so I want a car that I'm comfortable with. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a beautiful shot up here, though. Zoom. Let's just let's just time out real quick, because, I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Where were we? Ah, yes. Gravity. <laughs> but at least with the B grade of vehicle... We don't feel too out of control doing a lot of this. Otherwise, you come off that jump in like an S1 and you're basically just hitting the wall. <laughs> it's just absurd. Now here, you got to remember to go onto the road. 
So we managed to get ahead, now we just have to stay ahead, which is easier said than done, as we know, but hopefully... We'll just manage to pull out a little bit more each time. Sure enough, lap two, and we've managed to at least keep our lead about the same. In fact, I think we've pulled out a little bit more. So hopefully we can keep that going. Interesting to see what the lap time split is like up here. We do our first was 139, next one 134. Not bad. Seems an interesting choice to use B-class buggies uh, for this track specifically being part of the championship because this uphill section, especially the bit going up to the jump up here, struggle streak right here. <laughs> especially when you crash through a brick wall at the bottom of it. We're just losing speed, struggling up the hill. Doesn't help that because we're in auto, I think we'd have been better off being in a fifth gear probably for that last section. But I'm not laying manual just for that. <laughs> a little bit slidey coming off there, we're gonna shed a lot of our lead there, but we've built up a decent distance, and that gives us plenty of room to make some mistakes. And up to the line. First race, well done. And from what is quite a long cross-country circuit race to what is possibly one of the shortest, I think. Just a quick figure of eight, very mishapen figure of eight, around the Eurodrome. Now this is an interesting track when it comes to the AI because they can get very mixed up on the next segment because there's some jumps that they try and do and sometimes they get a little bit stuck also we are not doing well on these corners in the wet so i prefer to take the low road they take the high road sometimes they just get stuck and fall down this gap here looks like they've made it this time it just kind of depends if they get a bit caught up on each other and start having a few knocks because then they just go all over the place. Ooh, much like I did with that corner. This is a short enough track that I think I need to rewind that because I can't really afford to be making those mistakes that early on. I don't want to be just redoing this track, so brake first and then turn. There we go. That's a bit better. Didn't really see the corner coming as much as I should have. Never quite sure whether it's best to go through the pipes here. On balance, I'd rather just go around the outside just in case. <laughs> Again, you can shoot through a pipe on the right hand side there, but then it makes your corner here very, very tight. And it's already a pretty tight bend, which is why I slid so wide last time. That time, much better. Yes, you go up there, mate. You go up there and I hope you crash. <laughs> No hard feelings, but I hope you crash. Well, sure enough, there, there was a very stopped driver tower icon. I think he might have flipped or something. That's why I never take the high road. It's also a little bit dangerous going on the low road, of course, because depending on how far ahead you are, sometimes there might be traffic still coming through across this stretch when you're wanting to come across the other way. But, uh, we're not that far ahead, so not a problem. I am kind of tempted to take the high road this time just to see if I can see what happened to that guy. <laughs> see, a bunch of the guys going through the pipe back there and then running out of room on the corner. Let's go up here. What happened? Oh, God knows. Uh, unless there's someone stuck underneath, that's also possible. Ooh, we just gave away our lead doing that. See, that's why you don't take the high road. You know what? Uh, we'll let them have it. That's fine. Could have rewound the whole thing, but at the end of the day, second is fine. We won the first one. So I originally started doing this championship in the hope that maybe the cross-country circuit that I needed for the weekly challenge would actually be part of 
the series. Uh, it wasn't. That's fine. This cross-country race here, though, I think finishes at around the place of the castle. It certainly goes south from the city anyway, after climbing up Arthur's seat here. We then dip down again, and I, I think end up near the castle? Who knows? <laughs> It'll get us a little bit closer anyway. And then we'll be well positioned to just do that race finish the weekly challenge and then move on to something that doesn't involve a buggy <laughs> we can move on to hopefully real cars and real racetracks so i managed to take the lead already it's an interesting two-way thing there you actually can go through a tunnel which is kind of fun and it's useful to do so in some regards because doing so will discover for you the fact that there is a bonus board inside there so word to the wise <laughs> taking an early lead is good but it does mean that we're now trail breaking all of the barriers for everyone which slows us down a little bit but sometimes you can use that to our advantage and actually use it to slow ourselves down for a corner so there's that Well, despite all the motorway barriers and rock walls and slowing down because of that, we have managed to keep our lead for now. <laughs> Had a good final bend. Now we've just got to hold it together to the line. And race on through to the castle after this. And here we are approaching Bamborough Castle. And our purposes for coming here are twofold. One, we do want to do the cross country race, but also, this is a player house. It costs 10 million credits. I have just over 10 million credits. So, I think I might be able to hook you up with a castle. It'd be in partnership with National Heritage, and you'd have to let visitors tour the museum and maybe your car collection, but come on, a castle. He makes a compelling argument. A castle. Then I dub you Lord of Bambara Castle. Well legal custodian actually don't get any ideas yeah yes i would like to set this as my home well hello your royal highness you got enough space for all your cars in that castle i've just been told about another barn find rumor just down the road from your new digs want to go check it out and this is the final barn find that is locked behind buying the castle so we'll go scout that out as well while we're here. It is night time, which is annoying. And here we have, we have it. A now that is an antique. Looks like a Bentley. These old ones are quick, but they weigh about as much as a cruise ship. Somebody tried to beach it on the sand and all. Come on, give me a hand. I'll go give it an overhaul, a detail, a sand blast, you know. Be good as new in a bit. Excellent. So we've still got to go find the spring barn find, but that's further north. We'll be going back there later. For now, let's just get to the cross-country race. Now, the interesting thing with the castle cross-country circus, you come in here and it wants to do extreme off-road as the spring event. Now, we're in an off-road buggy not an extreme off-road so we have to go into custom events instead you can create your own however what i like to do in situations like this is look for ones that say something like castle cross country instant win so what happens is that someone places down a course that the ai follow but the checkpoint is directly ahead so you just drive straight there just like that we now have to drive for a total of 10 miles apparently so that doesn't always work that little instant blueprint hack thing um it depends on the nature of the challenge as it's given i think but uh for that one it did <laughs> and it just it's a lot easier i don't cheese things a lot in this game in that regard but come on <laughs> I can't bother doing yet another race. I've already done three. If they'd just made the weekly challenge win a cross-country circuit race in your off-road buggy, there'd be no problem. I've already done, well, two circuit races. 
The fact that they made it a hyper specific one and one that doesn't even want to let you race it as a buggy by default in the first place, now that's just annoying. So we counteract its annoyingness with cheese and it's super effective. And because we have to drive this thing for 10 miles, we're just taking it across the country to find our spring barn find rumor. You may also see on the minimap there's a few of the PR challenges around this area. I'm going to come back and do those later with a better car because they require a much higher speed than what I can do in this thing. So we'll pull our Rymac out after we find the barn find and after we... Oops, that's a tractor. And after we finish off this 10 mile drive. Now I could do a similar thing to what I did last time with the gauntlet and have instead done the titan that would have been a great idea if i'd thought of it now a few moments later now you may remember that uh, we had a similar thing happen with a weekly challenge last week where we had to drive a certain amount of distance in the land rover and we raced in the gauntlet event because it was conveniently about the right length well we're now racing the Titan, which is the cross-country longest race, because it is about 15 kilometers, which is not quite 10 miles, but we've already driven some distance in this that counted towards that objective just to get here, so that's a good start. Oh hey, we're <laughs> bouncing through the grounds of our former home again. We're almost halfway through because it's a B class buggy instead of what was a C class Land Rover last week uh, it will at least be a little bit quicker to get through as you can see we're over halfway and it's only been about three and a half minutes instead of I think it was about five and a half for halfway last time even though I think the tracks are about the same length We aren't doing nearly as well, and in fact I'll be surprised if I manage to pull this out and actually win, because the, the front runners are way off ahead. I'm not entirely sure what I should be doing better, I think I've been hitting too many walls, which doesn't help. See, like that, I tried to cut the corner and, and go straighter, but it was actually a worse decision because it just slowed me down by hitting the walls, and yeah, now I'm being overtaken, left, right and centre. It's just, yeah, quite annoying. It's the aspect of these cross-country races I just do not enjoy. Oh, well, there we go. The spice must flow. That is the uh, weekly challenge done, at least. So now it doesn't matter what we do. But I would still want to finish the race, and I would still like to do well. One of those things is going to happen. Uh, so we almost managed to get through the section of wall that had been completed, but the car decided to jump a weird direction. And we really struggle up that hill. <laughs> <laughs> and bottom out on the landing. Crunch, crunch, crunch. As I said before, I think the cross-country races, the A class, I feel, is the, the best area. B class is good for dirt racing. A class, I prefer the cross-country because you have that bit of extra power and extra resilience so that when you do hit the barriers and stuff, it doesn't just completely kill your speed. I mean, it doesn't help that the AI just are not nearly as affected by all of the environmental conditions as you are. Like, they, they are having no issues with all of this stuff. And yes, I sound like I'm making excuses. I totally am. Let's finish it in style, shall we? Can we even make it? Oh yeah, we can. Just. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's go hunting for our final barn find. The spring seasonal barn find. Is that a GT? Mm. Aye, it is a GT. They're up for a crash test by the look of it. <laughs> See the fiducial markers down the side. So much for the dummy that left it here, eh? Ha! 
Hours now. See you back at the garage in a bit. You have completed Barnstormed. So I don't know if I've actually looked at this yet in this series, but the Star Cards is kind of a collection of achievements that you can aim for in the game. It's kind of like the accolade system in 5, at least a little bit. So they're broken down into sections. There's the Racing Superstar here. We've got to do a few more things here. Got to complete some more finales. Uh, got to drive just a lot more distance, looks like. Uh, win the Remix events. We've got another one of those coming up soon. And there's an exploration section where first just owning lots of cars, discovering, apparently I've got to discover one more road. Interesting. And the beauty spots are the 12 out of 22 includes the DLC. So there's Fortune Island and the Lego Valley. Yes, you heard that correct. There's a Lego DLC. We'll get to that in future. <laughs> they have their own beauty spots. They also have their own uh, roads and bonus boards and I said before that there was the final barn find, there is one more and it's a Lego one. So again, we'll get to that in future. So PR challenge time, we've pulled out the Rimac with the off-road tyres in order to put plenty of its copious amounts of power down, build up a decent amount of speed through here, got to brake pretty hard for this corner though, it's just going to kill us a lot. We need to keep it above 170 for the overall speed zone which might just be enough. There we go. I do find it easier going that direction for some reason. I think the sharp turn right at the start here, otherwise you can enter into it with a lot of speed, but you lose it immediately. So always best to go from the other direction where you get the biggest amount of speed that you can carry into the challenge. On to the next PR challenge, which is a danger sign. Rather than following the road, I usually find that coming across the country here, we get a bit of a bit of run up before the jump. And we're most way across the pond, which should be plenty. 275. Yep. New PB, in fact. All right, I'll take it. And lastly, we now have a speed trap that we need to line up for, and we need to be going about 321 k's an hour when we finally go through it. That was not a very efficient way to get through that corner, but never mind. We probably want to use like the Jesco or something instead, because the off-road tires in this is not really going to help our case. Or, or I guess we could just do it anyway there we go complete all seasonal pr stunts in a festival playlist series that is achievement number one out of the way there are three that we are essentially going for the pr challenges the seasonal championships and the overall just 100 percent of everything in playlist series and we are 50 percent of the way through spring gets us a Porsche 928 GTS. Now on to our next seasonal championship which is a road racing event which works out quite nicely because there is a daily challenge to win a road racing circuit. So so long as we can fight our way through all of these other B-ranked Toyotas, we're in a Supra, they are in all manner of other things, there's a Land Cruiser behind us that we're really not wanting to mess with. This is such a tight track, I always struggle with this one just to be able to find room to overtake anyone because you're just getting knocked all over the show. Everyone's trying to push you into the wall. Exhibit A, thank you very much. Thankfully he wasn't a very powerful car, or very weighty at least. Well, we've managed to move up a few spots doesn't help that this Supra is completely stock as well. I, I really should have checked to see if I had a lower rating Toyota that I could tune up to improve some, you know, the usual sorts of things, tires, suspension, stuff like that. Whereas this is, I think, barely under A rating. It's at the top of the B without any tuning whatsoever, which unfortunately means that you can't really do anything to it. But we're making it work, slowly, slowly but surely. I need to win a circuit event eventually. It doesn't have to be this one. 
I just have to win this championship, which has two more races to go after this one. But by judiciously cutting some corners here and there, and leaning on our AI opponents, we are starting to move up through the field. That corner back there is always a problem for me. But we managed to get through this quite nicely. What are you? You're a different type of super. Well, they never cut the corner properly there. Right, now we just need to hold the lead until the end. Well, the first time going through some of these corners without someone shunting into us. It feels nice. The difference it makes when you're not getting pushed sideways through a bend. And there we have it. Right, your eyes aren't fooling you. This is now a red car, but it is the same car. <laughs> I've done a few tweaks. I managed to upgrade pretty much all the driveline stuff. Um, bit of gearbox, diff. A few things that might make just a, a few little differences here and there. It's raining, which isn't great. Needless to say, I could not upgrade the tires without pushing it into A grade. But hopefully what I have done will be enough. Weirdly, I looked up about all of the other... Well, not all of them, but had a quick look for other Toyotas that might have been a lower category that I could upgrade to be into this category. And they're pretty much all not readily obtainable. You can't just get them from the auto show. They're all considered hard to find and you have to get them from like Forzathon Rewards or uh, from the auction house. Even if it's just a Corolla or a Celica, I don't get it either. Apparently Toyotas are considered special. <laughs> You can have the Land Cruiser and the Baja truck, but uh, not a Corolla. Go figure. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't really need anything more than a Supra. Um, I just really wish that the rating for this championship was A, so that I could have upgraded more things like the tyres and... Pretty much just the tyres, actually. <laughs> Let's be honest. Also, I wish I could have Rally Springs for that stint through the water, but that's that's the only part. I just know this bit is going to screw me with these guys. Yep, there we go. They always break way more than you need to through there, given that you pretty much don't need to break at all. And then they just get right in your way, right on the line that you want to take. Oof. Speaking of lines that you want to take, uh, don't take that one. Now we just need to basically do the same thing to them for these corners here. It's just to <laughs> break plentifully, occupy the good line, make it so they can't get past. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Ooh, yeah, we still run right. Okay, your brakes. Brakes was the other thing I wanted to upgrade. Tires and brakes. Never mind. <laughs> Alright, last race of the championship, and apparently now it's a street race. I could have sworn that we were doing road racing up until this point, but now it's a street race, apparently. Whatever. Uh, honestly feel I should have just done what that guy ahead has done, and upgrade a Land Cruiser to be able to push everyone out of my way. My current Land Cruiser rating is a D. I've got it at the top of D rating, just to be a pretty good cross-country racer at that level sometimes you need to race something at d-class so it's good to have one but i could save the tuning and then uh, do another one for b rating but so long as we stay in at least third we've won the last two races I back my chance of being able to get to the front of this again anyway, let's be honest, it, it should be fine. Especially, we can hope that they crash into some traffic, and that we don't. That and just, you know, I need to be better. <laughs> so let's try and actually pay attention to what we're doing. Dive on the inside, hopefully they won't. Darn, I think they did. 
That corner always screws me. I think they got caught up on the traffic because I really thought after that corner that they'd be right behind me. Well, we'll keep dicing with danger and hope that they don't pull it off. Oh, and the finish line is right here. This is actually a really short race. Alright, well, I guess we're fine then. <laughs> Alright, now we're on to the final seasonal championship of the series, and it is a dirt championship, and it appears to be celebrating France, B rating French cars, so we have tuned up our Clio that we have, I've swapped it out for all wheel drive, and given it rally tyres, and rally springs, so I'm hoping that once we get onto the rough stuff, we should be able to get ahead and stay ahead quite nicely. It was even a C class, which means that I had a lot of overhead for doing a lot of the handling work. Haven't been able to do much in the way of the power, but I don't think that's going to matter as much. The important thing is going to be getting around the corners and getting what power we have down, rather than just boosting performance. And sure enough, we seem to be justifying that decision pretty quickly. I guess maybe they wanted to tribute to the Olympics? <laughs> it's a bit late, but... Seems maybe the dude ahead had a similar set of parameters when tuning his vehicle. Can't make out whether that's another Renault or a Peugeot. But either way, both have pretty good rally pedigrees, and it's definitely a classic vehicle, so it would have had a lot of scope for upgrades. But I'm breathing down its neck now. He didn't even really break for that corner. Ballsy. I think it's another Renault. I just can't get past him down here, but maybe on the inside on the corner? We'll just shunt him wide. Yeah, there we go. Excuse me. Excuse me, merci. Merci beaucoup. Yes, my French is abysmal. I'm sure there's some sort of historical significance to driving French cars through the countryside in Scotland, but I can't remember. <laughs> I think it was the, the French and the Scots had something? Some sort of collusion? Or is that the Irish? Probably both. It's pretty much anyone who wasn't the British. <laughs> of course we're not going to do as well on these road segments, but then neither should the guy behind us. I really feel they could have worked out these events better in this series, because the ending of this one, we're starting all the way down by the reservoir, and we're ending about where the last one ended again. I mean, I'm fairly sure there's a couple of circuit events that are right there that would have been really good to move on to. And the final event is all the way out on the coast near our castle. Completely adrift from the other two. I don't know whether or not that it's just all randomly put together. I kind of have to assume so, because if it was manually done, then someone's an idiot. Whereas if it's just automatically done, where it's just a random selection of three of the available discipline events, then sure, I guess that makes sense. It'd be nice if they had some sort of algorithm bias towards where they could figure out the start and finish lines and weight them together. Out of my way, Mosquito. I'm going to zap you. I would have thought having a more modern engine would give me an advantage even without being having been able to tune it up much, but I don't know, maybe he's replaced his engine with the modern engine. Actually, if he sounds like that, that sort of mosquito sound, he's probably got a one of the inline four turbo rally engines swapped into it. Whatever it had before <laughs> won't matter. Never mind, we dispatched him. We swatted him like the mosquito that he was. And like I was saying, we're coming up to the finish line in a very similar area to where we finished the last one, and I know for a fact that there are a couple of really good scramble events right nearby. 
But to get to the last event, we've got to have a little bit of a drive. Because sure enough, we're now back down near the castle. <laughs> so many things seem to be gravitating towards this area in this particular series. And even the last one would have actually been a really good finishing spot for them going hunting for a barn find rumor. Uh, we didn't know that in advance. You can't just go around accepting or starting all of the championships and seeing what races they involve annoyingly. It'd be nice if you could and just have multiple on the go, but no, once you start one championship, you must finish it, otherwise you will forfeit your progress if you start any other race. It's quite annoying and doesn't make sense. Like, I am sure in this day and age of computing, and even, you know, from 2017, I think it was that this came out, surely it could keep track of multiple things at once. <laughs> Especially if they're in different disciplines. I don't know. It would be nice if you could just race your way around they coordinated especially if you didn't have fast travel for free yet not that it took that long to get that admittedly but still it should be a consideration if people want to string things together more logically it would have been so much cleaner if you could just have all of the championships open not even have to like start a championship even just have them there and showing that hey they are one out of three and then you could just start with whichever one you wanted, which you kind of can do. You have to go to the particular node to start it, and it'll want you to jump straight in, but you can back out. Like, if you find that the car selection isn't good for you, if you want to tune something else up to race instead, you can do that. And then you can actually start with whichever one you prefer. But it's not obvious. Well, the Mosquito doesn't seem to be putting in nearly as much effort this time. Um, <laughs> we've kind of burnt them all off quite quickly it turns out and we have one more corner before the finish line at the motorway it's a strange place to finish but never mind there we go spring into racing oh yeah stardew rally was the name of that championship i've never played stardew valley but i can appreciate the pun oh hey that peugeot looks familiar doesn't it Complete all seasonal championships in a festival playlist. Excellent. That is the second pillar. And on to the showcase remix, where we've got a taxi against a delta wing. But don't worry, not just any taxi. This one is rather tuned up. There is actually a business, Isha's Taxis, that I think you use this thing in. It's like a fully turboed out racing car in a taxi shell essentially. Fun little storyline. And as usual with these showcases, you know the drill, they're pretty scripted. This thing's just gonna fly over us every now and then, regardless of what we do with our performance. The crucial thing is usually the like final few bins. Up until that point, I think it doesn't matter too much. You don't want to fall too far behind the, what they expect you to be doing, but... It's really distracting, having the screen shake so much when you're trying to negotiate a corner. Putting this much power into a taxi body is very much the epitome of just because you can, doesn't mean you should. So he just went off to the right. Oh, and then there it is. Okay. <laughs> right, these are the important corners here. So we do our jump, which I think we're actually slightly ahead of, so that's good. And then we have this corner here, and then we race to the line this direction. They're going around to circle back the other direction, which the there we go, magically been able to do. We were well ahead. <laughs> it actually had to catch up in order to, to meet up with us. 
There we have it, Perfectionist, doing all eight season completionist bonuses in the same series. And we're 80%. Gives us, oh, hey, a Toyota, that would have been handy. 16% <laughs> remaining, and that is just the final four daily challenges and the two multiplayer things, which we'll do on our own time, because again, we can never guarantee how long they're going to take, and they can be extremely frustrating. Uh, the seasonal playground games is actually really easy it just takes a long time for people to join and for it to progress between the rounds the trial is the really frustrating one but i'm hoping that being in spring it should be right autumn is always the worst we'll see i think it's a road race at least that's a good start <laughs> anything but cross country but like i said i'm gonna do them on my own time uh we might pop back in on Thursday where I can demonstrate the 100% again hopefully with a longer video than last time I, I was just getting over the flu I'm still getting over it now uh, but hopefully by Thursday this week I should be a bit more recovered and we can do a, hopefully a bit more of a special video to crown off getting the 100% of the series I'm not sure quite exactly how but we'll see if we can think of something either way for now, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.